my buddy from college how you doing my man i'm doing well how are you doing just finishing up last week of school here uh before finals so it's actually getting kind of busy I'm on the remote learning side but um it's been good how you doing no doubt bro uh, i'm chilling chilling you know you know the deal okay we ready for these duos i am ready all right so just just to clarify the rules um we are drafting duos who we think are – so basically the rules are you're starting a team. Which duo in the NBA now that play on the same team would you want to start your franchise with? So we can – I'll give you the first pick, and we can just go back and forth. No need to snake. Um, 2021, so presumably everybody's healthy. Um, any other rules? I oh, yeah. that pick positionally like don't worry if like you take a lot of guards and you don't have any bigs it's just for sure yeah. each time you're drafting to start a team right all right so I think I'll probably steal your thunder with the number one um with with Braun and AD and I think it's pretty easy I think there's like a top tier of players in the NBA um it may be like five or six um and Braun and AD no matter how you stack it up or or two of those players, and I don't think you can say the same with, with any of the other duos, so I'll take them them two first. Yeah, that's a good pick. I mean, they're arguably the first and second best player in the league. I mean, together, they average more than 50 points. Um, they both rebound the ball at a high level. Um, both can pass. They're both skilled. They can both switch. Um, you can play through both of them. Both of them can command an offense while the other is off the court. So, yeah, I like that one. Yeah, it's going to be tough. All right, second pick. All right, KB, what do we want to do here? Do we want to go Russ and Harden, or do we want to go Kawhi and PG? This is tough. What do you think, E? Who do you like? <laughs> I'm not telling you my pick, but I'll tell you this. It's neither of those. Really? Oh, I know who you're going to take. Uh, I'll go with – all right, if it's neither of those, I'll take PG and Kawhi. Two wings. Both can shoot. Both are switchable. Highly efficient. Um, obviously, Kawhi last year go running through the uh, run through the playoffs with the championship. So, yeah, I mean, there's not much not to like about those two. Right, interchangeable wings. Exactly. Play play good day. Is I feel bad with PG kind of running the offense out there by himself. I guess without Kawhi, but. Last two years, he's been highly productive. He had an injury-ridden year, and I do worry about their health, especially because Kawhi with the load management and PG's always had the nagging injury, so they're going to miss games, which kind of worries me taking them this high. But, I mean, the star power is there, and they can guard and score a lot, right. and they're efficient. So that will leave a lot of possessions for these other guys. So that's my pick. Right. And, I mean, PG was an MVP candidate before he got hurt last year, I and mean, he was having a best, best year of his career. Yeah, yeah, coming off that. So he can really score it. So I'm, I can't be too worried about it. Both can shoot the three, too, for spacing. Mm -hmm. uh, so my my next pick here is, because uh, we're assuming everyone's going to be healthy, is, is KD and, and Kyrie. Yeah. Um, touching first on Kyrie as a Celtics fan, um, not, the, not the best locker room guy. Can be sort of, um, in terms of just like his mood is just like, seems like it's changing every single day. Um, so that can be sort of tough to maneuver around. But, uh, you know, he's obviously been a part of a championship team. So, Very um, you know, he can do it. Um, and, I mean, there's no denying his, his playmaking um, and his on-the-court, um, you know, just abilities. Um, and then KD, um, <clears throat> I think you probably make the argument that he was the best player in the league last year um, before he got hurt in the playoffs, at least that playoff stretch. Um, he was playing the best by the time he got hurt. Um, and I think he's the, the best scorer um, in the NBA. Um, so that's sort of the, the second reason, especially because like in the playoffs, you know, in like a <clears throat> Eastern Conference Finals um, or, or NBA Finals now, you know, fourth quarter, 
you know, possession starts slowing down. You need someone to get a bucket and um, he would be, <clears throat> he would be my number one pick regardless. So, um, so I'm going to go with them next. The problem with that, the, with that one for me is, there's a little redundancy with those two, just as isolation scores. I mean, obviously we're nitpicking. Those two are two of the top 10 players in the world. But, and then are you not worried about Kyrie's defense at all? Uh, not really. Um, I mean, I, I would obviously prefer to be better, but um, no, not not particularly. I mean, uh, Steph didn't really, like, go crazy on him. Yeah, true, true. Yeah, that's a good pick. I mean, those guys are going to score the ball at a very high level. I'll be interested to see, like you said, though, the locker room stuff, because those two are both kind of moody dudes. Right. <laughs> right. Kyrie's very eccentric. Like, he – you don't really know what you're getting. And Kyrie's a little injury prone. That, oh, 100%. A little injury prone, you know? I, that's what, I think that's the biggest drawback for, for them is, is actually just him staying on the court. Yeah. I mean, he always has, like, weird, you know, like, knee or ankle injuries and stuff like yeah. that. I saw on Twitter somebody said about Kyrie being ex- eccentric that uh, they think he firmly believes that he got into Duke um, for academics alone. <laughs> There's no way that kid. You can't actually think that. <laughs> no, but I think he probably thinks he's smart enough to get in one. He certainly thinks enough. He needs to calm down a little bit. Um. Okay. So that leaves me. I will go with Harden and Russell Westbrook from the Houston Rockets. Um. Two former MVPs. Two dominant ball guards. Two guys you can play through. Harden has led the NBA in scoring the last two years, averaging, what, 34 one year and more than 30 for two years in a row. Westbrook missed a triple-double. Um, they really unlocked him with the small ball at the end. He was playing his best basketball. But the thing I like most about these two dudes is just how many games they play. Like, I know when, just, when I'm starting a team, those two dudes are going to be out there for 70-plus games. You know? Agreed. So that level of I think over that many games, I got to take them. Yeah, I mean, they were a little bit lower on, on my board here, but uh, – What don't you like about what, I mean, I, I'm unapologetically a big Russell Westbrook fan of, like, yeah. the player himself, but I wouldn't necessarily want to build a team around him, um, if that makes sense. But I also, like – like, he sort of made triple doubles look – routine I mean he has made them uh, look routine and yeah. all of a sudden they've become like not cool and not impressive yeah. uh, but then you see like anyone else like a Jokic gets one and everyone freaks out about it um, yeah. but it's like Russell Westbrook's averaging one um, but I guess I don't know I think that with with them and I guess it, maybe it's not necessarily pertaining to this draft because you're sort of building your own team but um not that their offense is fluky, but um, I think there's something to be said for, like, playing – if you're playing them in a series, um, some of their stuff gets, like, so redundant that it gets easier to guard, if that makes sense. Like, just going into Houston and having that, like, onslaught of offense on, like, a random Wednesday night is, you know, like a, a very, very tough thing to guard. But I think they can sort of get worn down and, and their offense gets a little too um, – a little too simplistic, maybe. Um yeah, I feel that, but at the same time, I mean, the only team that's beaten them in the last two years is Golden State. They've waxed pretty much everybody else. Um, and I mean, they really had Golden State on the brink in 18, and then 19, I mean, Durant goes down. It's a weird situation. I mean, there's no excuse, but I don't know. I kind of – I would have been interested to see how it played out this year, especially just with the small ball. Um because some of their ma- – I like some of their matchups. Like, are they really going to – like, how do you play a big man against them? Like, what was Gobert going to do? What was Jokic going to do? Yeah, no, I mean, that's, that's a good point. Especially, like, I don't know. Like, if you're <laughs> it's, it really is tough. One of those teams that plays through, like, a center is a big part of what you do. Like, a, like Denver, they play through Jokic. How is Jokic going to possibly play in a series against them? Like, how is he going to guard pick and roll? Or how is he going to chase P.J. Tucker or Covington around? Like, and he – I don't think it's going to be to the point where he's murdering them like that on the other end. You don't, though? Probably. I mean, if he's catching the ball. As much as, like, a Harden or a Westbrook is going to be able to get his on them, on him. That's fair. I mean, I just see him catching the ball, like, 
looking over the defense and, you know, just like consistently making the right play. And when yeah. you've got somebody – I mean, P.J. Tucker's tough, but they're also – like, I feel like they're kind of thin too. Like, it's tough to play undersized for that long throughout the game. Like, yeah. just like rebounding and stuff like that. Like, it's really – not really – it's easy to play that in, like, spurts. Yeah. But once you can start to get worn down. Yeah, that's a good point, especially – yeah, especially multiple series in a row if you're going for many games. But, but I mean, if we're, starting, if we're starting a team though, we don't, we wouldn't necessarily have to play without a center. Right, Although, right. That might be the best way to use Russ. I would, I don't. I mean, I like Covington a lot, but I didn't love them losing Capella as bad as I thought he was in the playoffs um, last mm-hmm. year. Nineteen. God, he was awful. Do you um, think Russ is an upgrade over uh, CP? No, but. Especially not the way they want to play. Like, again, like, I think Chris fits better next to Harden. Just because he's so skilled, he can shoot the three. He uh, he has – I don't know. He's he's a better defender for sure. And Russell's a really good player. But, like, when you have Westbrook, you kind of got to commit to the Westbrook show. Like, right. Chris fits in better as a piece. Like, he can play off the ball. He can cut. He can come off pick and rolls. Whereas Russ, it's like, all right, when Russ is here, we're playing the Russ way. You know, which I think hurt them. I mean, they had to get rid of their lob threat, kind of reduce Harden a little bit. But, all right, Harden and Russ, you're up next. Who you got? This is where it starts uh, to be interesting. Yeah, I agree 100%. Um, <clears throat> so, right now I got Steph and Clay. Um, and I think I think the biggest, like, argument I can make, um, like, like, for them is um, – sort of coming against people, like, discrediting them for KD, you know, hopping on the team. Because yeah. it's not like you go uh, – it's not like you win, what was it, 72 games. Yeah. Um, and the next season, like, you're all of a sudden winning, you know, 50 games. Like, they were still going to be elite. And I think the biggest thing, you know, sort of like the most misguided argument is when KD went down and then everyone on Twitter is like, oh, you know, Stephen Clay can't carry the team. Like, well, he's, what, making $35 million a year. Like, with him out of the game, they could, like, allocate that money, you know, towards supporting players to, to help them that, like, it's not – like, you can't just, like, say, like, without KD, they're, they're not good. They're, oh, they're missing a, a – Yeah, no doubt. Yeah, they're missing, they're missing a, you know, a max player's contract that they could, you know, turn into either another max player or, you know, like two very solid players. Um, yeah, and they've done it before. Yeah, I mean, the 73-win season and their championship season, like, I think, wasn't there a slogan, like, strength in numbers or something? And yeah. They used to play a lot of dudes. They used to play fast. Going in there, you're getting back cut. You're getting slipped on. You're getting transition. I mean, they were playing. I remember they had that crazy second unit with Bose, Barbosa, um, Berejao. Livingston. Yeah, Livingston with Iguodala at times. Clay or mm-hmm. some player stuff. Um and it's just, yeah, I mean, they just have a lot of depth. I mean, they won 73 games as those two guys as a center point. Um, defensively, they're solid. Steph is solid. Clay's, I think he's a little overrated, but definitely good. Yeah, that's a good pick. That's a lot of threes. How would you, I mean, I think, like, what comes next if those two guys are, are starting on the team? That, see, that's a perfect place to start because you have your backcourt. You have shooting. You have playmaking. What right. I mean, I think – so, I love their – I mean, look at their small forwards over the years. Um, and Harrison Barnes, obviously, uh, Iguodala. And I think Andrew Wiggins is going to be a really good fit for them. Um, uh, he, like, provides, like – I think Wiggins – huh? about Wiggins. I think Wiggins stinks. Yeah, I mean, I don't like him as a top two player, but as, as a third star on the team – well, not even a star. He's, like, a – glorified role player. I mean, he's, he, he'll be able to put up 20 points for them, take some of the scoring burden off, and yeah. present some size. And he, it's like a different type of offense where, you know, he's slashing, um, you know, either driving or, you know, like backups and stuff like that that they don't have with, with Steph and Clay. Like, they're not going necessarily, like, hard hard to the basket. Um, but, I, I mean, I think it just opens up so many opportunities for uh, for for filling your team around them. I mean, you got to get a couple guys that a, a big that um, can protect the rim, and then you can sort of just fill them in with, you know, some decent shooters and 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 just sort of like tough players because the offense is going to be there. 
Yeah, I wonder if they need shooting around him because that's not really talked about enough is like, Everyone says, oh, Harden and LeBron need shooting around them. And, yes, they do. Westbrook, another one. But it's like those guys kind of do too because if not, you can kind of just wildly hedge or double or switch those screens. Mm -hmm. So, I don't know. I, wonder, I, think, I think one of the main reasons they were so good is just five guys that shoot 40% from three, you know. <laughs> Draymond had that one year where he was really hot and made 40. It hasn't been the same since. But when you have 40 guys like that, it's really hard to guard, you know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that was that 73 one year. He was, he was shooting like 38%. Yeah. Like taking a decent volume, too. And then now, yeah, yeah. now he's shooting like 30%. Didn't he make like five in that game seven in the first half or three or something? He made. A, he, he definitely went on a run. He hit a clutch one at the end of the game. Yeah, he's uh, he's a lot. Love him as a player, but as a LeBron fan, it was rooting for him. <laughs> All right, so you have Kyrie, KD, Steph, Clay, and who Bron else? Bron AD. Yeah, and you got Bron AD. Um, so I got Kawhi and PG, Harden and Russ. And so now for my third pick. Ooh, this is tough. It gets really tough. Yeah. Mm, I guess I got to go. Uh, I guess I got to go Giannis and Middleton. I agree. You know, Giannis is obviously Giannis. I would have been interested to see how he was in the playoffs this year. Just because, uh, you know, a lot of players like that, they make the early exit, they come back different. I don't really know how much different he came back. But the East is wide open, so maybe he would have uh, – maybe he would have had a little better of a time. Yeah, like he's marginally improved as a shooter, but it's still like – he's still not there yet. That's what uh, they I'm, like. Is he really going to be doing that in a playoff series, shooting that slow ass ball? I don't know. And they like love like clipping like back to back made threes or something like that. And it's like, like when Giannis figures it out, like it's over, something like that. It's like he's going to make two shots in a row every once in a while. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, yeah, I like Middleton too. Middleton's a little underrated to me. He can shoot, he has good size, um, can kind of isolate a little bit. Shoots a few too many long range twos for me, but I mean, I think with Giannis, with who's left on the board, I think you got to take the star power. Yeah, exactly. What'd you think of the Bucks? Uh, who who did who was your favorite going into the playoffs this year? Um, for the finals? I mean the Bucks. The Bucks ahead of oh, the, uh, the late team. Bucks and Lakers. Um, I wasn't very confident on the Sixers. I mean, they were – they kind of got saved maybe with – I mean, uh, Simmons was going to be out for some time. Um, Back, I wonder what's going on with that. I haven't heard a damn peep about that. Yeah, neither have I. Um, but, yeah, no, I like the Bucks out of the East. The Celtics giving them a good six, seven game series. Um, <laughs> and then you know, we were talking earlier um, sometime last week about Lakers Clippers, and we both sort of decided – or agreed on, on the Lakers coming out of the West. Yeah. All right. Who you got next? All right. So, um, my next pick is uh, Murray and Jokic. Really? Um, and I actually – so, I was, I was deciding between them and uh, Embiid and Simmons. Yeah. And I think, I think Embiid is better than Jokic, and I think Simmons is better than Jamal Murray. Really? Um, I just don't like them together. Um, together. Yeah, it just hasn't worked yet, and I just don't under I just don't see how you make, you know, a team around them. Like Embiid's biggest problem, I think, personally, is like just his outside shots. Like he just shoots too much from the outside, and yeah. Simmons and Simmons just doesn't shoot. So you got two bad shooters there. But uh, I'll get to Martin Jokic, I guess. Um, I just think they're two like very, um, sort of like smooth, um, you know, productive offensive players um Jokic is, is so crafty and Murray's crafty too um they move the ball well neither one of them is ball dominant by any by any means which is so I think you could just get yeah I think you could easily build around them because they're just two um I mean they're all stars but they're two like very good players I'd say yeah and they have a certain synergy together you know like each one kind of enhances the value of the other exactly uh, just to piggyback on the Joel and Ben thing, I think Joel really needs to play the shooting point guard. Like, if if he had Kemba, someone who can come off picks and actually shoot the ball, that opens up his role more. It opens up 
him to pop into space. It opens up his short roll. It's just with Ben there, no real pick and roll threat. Like Jimmy Butler isn't like a shooting guy who's gonna come off screens and take shots. Tobias can make a shot, but he's not like a pick and roll player. I think I'm gonna take them next, but I think you need he needs a shooting point guard. Like I agree. It's a lot of redundancy. It is. It's just two guys like stacked right on top of each other that need to play next to the basketball. I think the Ben is at his best as a small ball five. Oh, okay. You know, I'm still, I think Ben is used, would be best served. I think they're both best served with the other on the bench. But I think Embiid is probably a better center than Ben. But Ben is like the ideal. He's like a, a rich man's Draymond. More athletic, <laughs> a little bigger, same vision, same switchability, more athletic. I just see him as more of a five. Yeah, see, I see him as sort of a poor man, be honest. Yeah, and I think you'd be in a good, really good situation. <laughs> I've said that before. I think you'd be in a good situation if he was running point with four shooters around, surrounding him. If you had like a Brook Lopez as a center, yeah, um, yeah. That and would... just sort of just create, uh, like just from the top of the key, and he goes by people. Uh, he's got great vision and pass that to open shooters. I, I feel like that would be um, his ideal situation. I like the the small ball five though. That, that would be really interesting. It's interesting with these four because I almost feel like if you put Jamal with Joel and Ben with yeah. uh, Jokic, it would be better for both parties. Definitely. Somebody should probably get on that trade, by the way. That that, that kind of makes sense for both groups. Because didn't Murray and – are Murray and Ben the same draft class? I think they are, right, 2015? Yeah, I think they are the same draft class. So I think they both just signed, like, their, that extension – so yeah I mean that that's pretty interesting but I mean defensively Murray and Jokic that that's not the best no yeah. not ideal Jokic is fine Murray's a little weaker on the defense all right this is gonna be my last pick Katie's over here telling me we're going too long um <laughs> I'm gonna go I'm gonna go off the board here you, you probably didn't have this one on your board I'm gonna take CP3 and Shea Gilgis Alexander okay I like it. Mix things up. Other pick people, other duos in the mix for this one were uh, Kemba and Tatum. Mm -hmm. Maybe a little John Wall and Brad Beal coming back. Um, and I guess Drew and Zion. Did you have any? Did I did I forget anyone obvious? Uh, ja and Jaron Jackson Jr. and Siakam Lowry. Maybe a little <laughs> Dennis Smith Jr. Um, R.J. <laughs> Barrett. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. No, I'm going to pass on that one. Thanks, though. Um, yeah, Katie's over here saying Pascal and Lowry, and I do like those two guys. And those two guys are probably better, but I like CP3 and Shea more, so I'm going to take them. Um, two ball guards. Um, I think Shea's going to be really good next year. That will be year two for him, or year three for him. Year three jump, maybe get close to the All-Star game. It's pretty hectic out west. Um, but, yeah, CP probably only has one more year, so this is my last chance to take him. Um, what are your thoughts on that one? Can you see it? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, especially because you know, we were talking about this. It's all about you know trying to win a championship next year. Yeah. Um, so CP is CP is a good pick, and SGA is going to be awesome. Yeah, and the thing is, like the players that you would get to s support them, like work for both of those players. If that makes sense, like the same guy that's going to make Chris Paul better is the same guy that's going to make Shea better. Like, they probably – like, if I take those two, I'm going to need two wings that can shoot and guard big wings. And I'm going to need a center that can roll. You know, play, pick, and roll. So, I mean, I think they have a decent synergy there, you know, and then one can run the offense while the other sits. Um, I mean, Shea's averaging 19 points a game as a sophomore. Yeah, no, he's legit. I like him. Well, all right, E.D., all right. Appreciate you coming on, my man. Yeah, it was a lot of fun. Yes, sir. All right, man. Talk to you soon. Talk to you later.